Hey guys, Josh from Mad Charcoal here. Um, I'm going to be drawing a white chalk and pastel drawing on black paper. I know that the title of this video is um, white charcoal drawing on black paper, although there's no such thing as actual real white charcoal. It's usually chalk or pastel because to make charcoal you just burn wood and burnt wood makes the color black. So <laughs> you can't really do that with uh, with white. This is General's Charcoal, or General's, yeah, it says General's Charcoal White, although it's probably just a mixture of of white chalk. Maybe some clay in there for the pastel. And this here is pretty much the same thing. It's just a block of it that I shoved into this, uh, shoved into this pencil extender to have a decent grip on it so I can use it this way. So it's similar stuff, one's just for the finer details, one's for larger spaces. Although, the other thing I'm going to be using is pan pastel. So this is called pan pastel. I usually use it in black. This is titanium white. And this is a soft palette knife with a foam tip. And I'm just going to pick that up and use it. Oh, there's a little bit of black on the edge of that. Oh, well. I'm going to mix that in. I'm going to use that for the bigger, softer sections of the image. And I'm going to work smaller with the chalk, with the chalk pencils. And last but not least, a kneaded eraser. That's all I'm going to use for this whole drawing. This kneaded eraser works well because it leaves no crumbs and I can just erase out whatever I want to darken. So I'm going to work from light to dark, or sorry, dark to light kind of. Kind of the opposite of a, of a regular drawing. So this is black drawing paper. I think it's Canson, the brand. It's an old piece I found laying around that's just a little dirty, but it's okay. We'll use it anyway. Try not to waste the paper, so... The reference I'm using is right here on my iPad. It is just a low key drawing instead of a high key drawing. Um, mostly black and just some lightness for the face. You can use any photo you want, but I like to use some with the surrounding area is dark and then the portrait or whatever the focal point is, is light. So let's get right into this. I'm gonna establish where I'm gonna want everything which might be pretty rough, but it's okay. That's how we start off. We won't know where everything goes if we're not have, if we have anything on the paper, so. Establish some of that. I'll make a little bit of this lightness to back here too. Cool. And I'm not afraid to go a little too far with this in terms of um, where I'm adding white because I can always come back and erase. see it much yet, but I'm going to take the kneaded eraser, going to block in some of these shapes. I'm squinting while I look at my reference so that I don't get distracted by the details. Trying to get the larger shapes correct before I start to work on the smaller shapes. It's starting to come alive just a little bit. The more accurate, the more, the more accurate the proportions are, the more it reads properly and it reads effortlessly. I don't want the person to have to work too hard to make something out of this but I don't want to give so much information with this to the point where just blending it out a little bit with my fingers because it's a little too harsh of a white. <clears throat> now I'm going to take my piece of white chalk on a pencil extender and kind of start to establish where everything's going to go. I'm going to make this area white, this area pretty white, and then this looks like it should come in right in here. This area is going to be light, and this area here. Looks to me like this needs to be lighter around here, kind of like that. And then the nose 
just kind of falls in in this location here. Kind of have outlined where I'm going to work. So I don't lose sight of that while I am establishing tone. It is better when you're using white chalk to overlap to create a sense of light, not necessarily go too hard with the material and don't press so hard. You're not gonna get that light if it goes really hard, it's just gonna come really streaky, streaky. So what you wanna do is you wanna layer it, layer it. You can't just be like normal charcoal, you just press really hard and it gets really dark really fast. You need to layer it in. Let me grab that on. And I do want to soften it all afterward. I'm still adding to it. Hi, Chewy. My little pug, one of my little pugs just walked in. Go out, Chewy, go out. I need you to go out. Go out, dude. You sniffle really loud. You're gonna distract everyone. All right. Cool. I'm liking where the proportions are headed with this piece. And to smooth it all out once again with my hand. Looks like we're starting to lose some of those shadow areas and shadow shapes. So I'm gonna come back in with the kneaded eraser and block in. And then shadow of the upper lip down here where the lower lip should be. Okay. And there's a, this indentation there has a shadow on it. And It's a little too bright here. So we'll tone that down. There we go, it's starting to read nicely. It's a lot harder to work in the opposite way than what most artists are used to. Putting down light instead of removing light with the dark material, it's the opposite. So it's a little bit unnatural for most artists, not all artists, but it's really good practice even, even if you're not doing it for a finished product and you're just trying to get your drawing skill up. It's very useful. This is a little bit too, I'm gonna tone that back a little bit and reestablish that. I'm gonna give a little bit of a little bit of a hint of hair coming in through here. Some highlights coming in right here. Nothing too crazy. Just barely. <clears throat> and I'm gonna dip in this past pan pastel. Get some of those really bright whites back in there. Try not to overdo it. It's really easy to overdo it. Very easy. The softer, the better. Gradual differences in the tones.
adding more and more, be care being careful not to overdo it, and not to lose the sensitivity of light in the other places. You can learn how light works. You can learn the sensitivities of light and that'll help you with your art. Any kind of art, especially drawing and painting. The characteristics of light are universal. So it'll help you no matter what kind of art you're making. The light is its own language. And that's all we're working with here. Either light or the absence of light. Look at that, it's coming to life. Just needs a little bit to be, a little bit more highlights here. I'm going to be a little bit rough with the section so that it's not the focal point of the drawing. It could easily be the focal point if I just work on it a little too much. And then we'll remove from the, from the face. And I don't want to do that. It actually needs to be a little closer to the face, right up here. Let's move that a little closer. I don't want to make it too detailed though. <clears throat> There we go, that's exactly how you make a white, heightened, I guess you could call it heightened drawing. Usually a heightened drawing is something like on a, like a, like a tan paper where you work with black. And instead of using the tan as on the paper as the lightest part, you add white chalk so that it has this like, the white of the paper is kind of like a mid-tone. You go below that with the dark the charcoal and then you also go above that with the white chalk so that's why it's called heightened drawings usually this is a little different than that it's just white controlling those gradients and values a little bit more of a detail there and i think we are wait you can always work on a piece for your whole life, you could probably work on one art piece, but let's say this one's finished. All done. There we go. We'll add a little bit of streaks in the hair. Look at that. We're still working on it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. That's how I make a white chalk on black paper drawing, or white, you could say white charcoal, even though it's not really charcoal. Um, doesn't really matter, though. Same principle. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out madcharcoal.com slash shop. If you guys want to buy any of my work, I'll put this one up there for sale. And um, check out my Instagram if you guys want any want to watch as each piece gets done. And I'll upload it there. Thanks. Bye.